What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? You already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday, and it is with your girl. Muffins is my lovers. Of course, you guys, I'm all up in your face today. Do y'all see my little glow? I'm trying to look cute. I was I just finished doing this video trying out cheap makeup. Okay, so listen. I know a lot of people don't like to go to the beauty supply store or the hood beauty supply stores. I love the hood beauty supply stores, okay? I'm not talking about Sally's beauty supply store because Sally's is Sally's and I don't really think it's a beauty supply store, okay? It's just a store. You can find some beauty needs there. But they're not supplying you with everything, especially not for our ethnic group like me, okay? But let me tell you, if you go to like the hood stores where it's owned by the Asian people, you can find like every fucking thing in the world there okay so i just decided to do this video um trying out cheap makeup i i love cheap makeup don't get a bitch twisted i love cheap makeup like la girls cheap la colors is cheap um clean colors is cheap the list can go on and on and on but I seen this brand there and I was like, okay, I'm about to try this shit out and see how this work. Um, because I love concealers. I love anything that's going to bring out the beauty even more, intensify the shit. So I seen this brand called Black Pink. I ain't never heard of them before, but I was like, all right, I'm about to try this out. So I got like four of their concealers, just the ones that I would use. I don't, I'm not trying to buy a whole bunch of shit that I don't need, especially because I just went ahead and cleaned out like... I had this big ass bag full of garbage makeup. Not, it's not even garbage, but it got old. I hadn't used it in a while. Some of it I gave away. Some of it I threw in the garbage. Throw a lot of stuff out. So I'm not really trying to be nobody's hoarder. So when I seen this, it was cheap. I was like, oh, let me try this. It says HD. Don't everything say HD by now? But it was really cheap. And I said, I'm going to just buy what I would use. I'm not going to have all this extra shit like I get in the mail from companies that I don't use. Because I'm spending my own motherfucking money right now. So I got these. This is their highlight. This is the, um, you know, I use this for the contour. You know, bitch, contour her face. I don't really cream contour, but it worked out really good. I got this one here which was for underneath in the yellow stuff that I would use these are the four main ones that I was going to use I'm not going to get all those extra colors and shit that I don't need let me tell y'all it worked out really really good and a couple of the neutral lipsticks that a bitch always be picking up you know but also when I was checking out did I see this now first of all I was like touchdown first touchdown okay first of all Touchdown mean football, but we about to try this edge tamer the ultimate touch Everybody always want to come out with some new shit, but I did slick up I did slick my edges down with this stuff today. So and a few days ago, so it does work really well Okay, so if y'all see this at your hood beauty supply store or the um, this company called black pink definitely try it out I was happy with the turnout, you know the turn out the turn up Especially because it was on hand. I hated to have to buy stuff in the mail and then sit around and wait. Like, that's not the one thing that I like to do. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Now, first of all, let's talk about some lashes. I love doing my own lashes. Um, I only buy my lashes from Odd Kate House, okay? They super cheap. My lashes, my individuals be like a dollar ninety, no, excuse me, a dollar fifteen. They got all different kind of brands. So you can go up and get cheaper, you can get more expensive. I stay with what I like. And I like this brand called Cara Cara. I always get the long curved ones and I buy like a bunch of them at a time. Um, what do I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll buy like ten trays, sometimes more. But I always get the long ones, okay? And this is what I like. This is what I fucking like. So I found myself running low on them, okay? But I had to wait for them. I did have enough. But let me tell you, I decided, April, why don't you treat yourself to getting some eyelash extensions for the first time done professionally? Because you have done your lashes for like 10 years now. Maybe not. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Um, maybe like seven with the individuals. Let me tell you something. If you continuously do your lashes over time, they kind of, and if you do them a certain way, you you will lose your own lashes. Like I had these really long lashes that were mine. And over the years, they have gotten really thin. And let me tell y'all, they have gotten really, really thin and sparse. So now it's like, bitch, you best to put them fuckers on. So I was like, okay, Tati, call for me and find out about getting some last extensions, okay? So she was like, all right. 
I'm a call down the street where we went and got our nails done one time. They told her it was $45 for some lash extensions. I was like, oh, okay, let me try that out because other bitches be like $150. I get down there. Did this Chinese lady tell me it was $45 for these individual clusters? A bitch can do that on her own. I'm not about to pay you $45 for that. So she's like, oh, you want the one by one? I was like, yeah, the one by one. So that was $90. Let me tell y'all something. I sat there and that I laid there for like damn near an hour and a half letting her put those one by ones in, okay? And my eyelashes for, for 90 fucking dollars, okay? I gave her a $10 tip. She was so nice and everything, but my ass and my back was hurting from laying there. And never again will I give you $90 to put them one by ones in because I had to come the fuck home and add some clusters underneath that shit because it looked real thin and sparingly and I was just like, um, what the fuck? Not worth my time or my money. So yeah, this is the outcome of them. And listen, let me tell y'all, I had to add some shit to this. Never the fuck again. All right. Never again. will I do that. I'm just saying. But I Kate House, if you're looking for strips, if you're looking for individuals, definitely check them out. I will post the information below. They got fast shipping. You can get some free shipping if you spend like $40 or whatever. Definitely check them out. Also, I did get some underwear in the mail. Um, I know y'all girls have heard me talk about Splendies before. You get three pair of underwear a month, okay? So if you wash your ass consistently you will have some nice underwear. So everything is always wrapped up in some tissue paper, which is great. Uh, my highly suggestion is to y'all is to go up a size. So I got some really cute ones this time around. I got these, which listen, first of all, they real cute and all. They all lace and see through. Look at that in the front. But I'm just saying, a bitch needs some... I need a man to be showing these off for, okay? I really do need a man, okay? Who am I getting sexy for but myself? I mean, I like clean underwear, but if a bitch gonna wear some clean underwear, they gonna be cotton and ain't nothing special about the ones that I be wearing on a daily basis. Like, I change them twice a day, but I'm just saying, meaning I wash in the morning and at the nighttime. But these right here, though, I'm saying these is like dumb cute. I don't even want to talk about the um the what do you guys call that shit when you ain't had none in a while it's been almost two fucking years okay listen i'm saying they real fucking cute for a monthly subscription but a bitch be needing um a man or some motherfucking body to show these off for i mean i got somebody in mind but you know I got to wait for him to get here. You guys already know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about my ex-husband, okay? We be on the phone every fucking day. And, I mean, I'm saying, I'm going to just keep the tags on these and save these for him so he can see how cute my ass looking them. But, yeah, so, anyway, Splendies. They are a monthly subscription. Um, They got Splendies. They got Voluptuies. Mine's is from Voluptuies, their sister company, because that's for the more hippier, curvier girls. You know, not like you skinny bitches, Okay. And then y'all know, y'all have seen me talk about this brand a million times, Happiness Boutique. So let me tell y'all about them. I love them. I have so much freaking jewelry by Happiness Boutique. Now, they are located in Berlin, Germany. That's the one thing I like. I feel like I am a high-class bitch when I get some shit from international, okay? But I know y'all like, wait a minute, hold up. It's in another country. It's free shipping. So hold your horses and stuff like that. I love their jewelry. They got some really nice jewelry. It does not turn and tarnish. Now, the one thing I should have asked them for was a new necklace, the little heart one that I have. The, I mean, a heart, the little circular that the one that I had. Oh, my God. It got caught in my synthetic wig, and I popped the chain. I had it for, like, two years. It never turned, but I always wore it because it kind of, like, made me feel so much more comfortable about, you know, my scar right here. So, I got these right here. I'm going to just take these out. And these are really cute. They got some 
classical stuff. They got some dressy stuff. They got some everyday stuff. So that necklace that I had, which was like the eternity ring or whatever you want to call it, was um, it never tarnished on me. And I loved it so much because, listen, it just made me feel a little bit more secure. It kind of, it didn't really hide the scar 100%, but it made me feel a lot more comfortable, okay? So that was the one thing that I was like really upset about is that the necklace broke. Messing with the synthetic wigs, y'all. Now, I know I need to get my nails cut because these fake nails are have gotten really, really long on a girl. Now, look at these. These are so pretty. Look at this. So if you guys, whoo, get in focus now. If you guys are getting dressed up or going somewhere, definitely. They got some really nice statement jewelry, okay? I know I am not dressed for the occasion. But I'm just saying, these are really gorgeous. Look where they fall at. These are so pretty. And then um, I also got these right here. I'm like all up close and personal with y'all. So, yes. What? Now, I know this is not a haul video, but let me tell you something. I'm going to take the opportunity to show you guys. So, y'all could just choose for yourselves and then I got these which are so pretty they're very like I like them I like I I do like these ones I think I like these ones the most but I have some really pretty jewelry by them now look at these aren't these gorgeous like I love the golds of them really pretty super duper pretty The detailing is nice. It looks like lace. Really, really pretty, okay? Their stuff is really inexpensive, so definitely check them out. And so I got a necklace. If I would have known, like I said, that I was going to miss out on the necklace that I already had, like, that synthetic wig was, like, strong as a motherfucker. Pop my necklace. I was so hurt by it. I could have fixed. I couldn't fix it because of where it popped at. So I got this one right here. These come with three different necklaces. Um, really pretty. Oh. This comes with three different necklaces. So I mean, if you want to layer it, you can. I'm not really into all of that layering because listen, it starts to get tangled. But I thought this was cute. I find try to find stuff that I could wear on an everyday basis, and also that will kind of like camouflage my scar. Um, sometimes I'm really kind of, like I said, insecure about it. So I try to find stuff that will camouflage it. Um, cause some people just ask too many questions and I really don't like answering everybody's nosiness. So, and I know you can still see it, but listen, it works for me. It makes me feel a bit more secure. So like I said, you can layer it if you want to. It came with this one right here, which is so pretty. And the one that I have on, which is like an octagon shape. And then it came with this one right here, which is like some little spear. Spear. Really tiny. This is cute. I probably give this one to my mumsy. But I'll wear this one right here. So, yeah, definitely check them out. Happiness Boutique. I will post info below. There is a program where you can or earn free jewelry. So, definitely check it out. Um, So, we're just going to get into this real talk because it is one o'clock damn near in the afternoon and i really let me tell y'all y'all ever have a day when you just really want to get things popping and moving along and that shit just don't work out for you like and i feel like that is how my day fucking started off i'm gonna take these off because it really doesn't go with what i have on and that's how i feel like my day started off like at first, I thought it was popping, and I was like, okay, I'm going to just do my makeup on camera. But then I was like, you know what? No, I'm not, because I had to fight with my eyebrows today. I just had a fight with a lot of shit that was unnecessary. So it ended up prolonging my day. And honestly, really, honestly, I wanted to do this try-on video. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to get into it, because I'm, my feng shui is not down. It's not, I mean, it's not down, but it ain't where the fuck it should be, you know? And sometimes I have to be in the right Right mood to do shit but I really want to get this video done so I'm gonna really try my best 
to get through this. So yeah. Um, other than that, my life is like great. Today is of course Wednesday when this video goes up and it is my eldest son's birthday. He turned 25 years old today. Him and Mumsy are a week apart. Like, you know, Mumsy's birthday was last Wednesday and his birthday is the 23rd. So I'm like all proud of him because you know, you guys, he make music. He got songs out. He be performing. He be, um, he have his own little, he be having his own performances. I, I think that's what you guys call it now, you know, and I don't, I don't know if you guys want to call it a concert because as you guys get older, as uh, we get older, y'all change the name of shit. So I don't really know what the fuck you guys want to call it, but this nigga be doing his thing. He got his music, Percules. He got, um, no problems. I've been watching his shit, his performances on Facebook because, you know, people were recording and posting up to Facebook. And I was like, damn, these motherfuckers love him up there in New York. Like, okay, get it, Hollywood Shumpo. So that's his name, Hollywood Shumpo. And I am so proud of him. Like, you guys probably have heard me talk about him on numerous occasions to the point where we weren't getting along. And then we do. You know what? I'm so glad that we get along right now. We see eye to eye. I guess as your children mature and get older, they realize the person that they need to be and realize who they are and they stop their nonsense. So I am very proud of him. Very, very proud of him. He did have a clothing line coming out, Unlucky which he still has, but him and his best friend are doing it together now. So he more or less focuses more on his music and his best friend. He's handed that part of his life over his business over to his best friend, which has, they have been best friends since kindergarten. Um, so, but yeah, his birthday is today. He's 25 years old. So happy birthday. I love you. And I'm very, very proud of you. Other than that, has my life been okay? It has been. You know what? I just chill and I try to keep away from the drama and away from all of the bullshit that I just don't need in my life. So it's just April and the gang and the gang is my motherfucking kids. Okay. And that's about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just a soloist. I keep to myself and I think that's the best way that you need to be sometimes because like my son says in his song, you don't want no drama, you don't want no war, and you don't want it. So, like, the best thing you do is just to keep to yourself sometimes, you know. You get that lonely feeling, but you know something? Sometimes it's best to just keep to yourself because when you feel like you have a friend, that bitch be crazy as a motherfucker, or she run her mouth and she say some unnecessary shit that just ain't cool. So, sometimes you just got to keep to yourself and be who you are alone you know what i'm saying like i don't mind being alone um but there are some times when i would like to be chilling with people but then there are some times when you know what let me just let me just live and keep to myself okay that's about it so you can't use the word friend loosely okay because that bitch ain't my motherfucking friend and that bitch ain't my motherfucking friend and the friends that i do have are really really small like those those two of those motherfuckers okay that's it that's the fuck it but yeah, so let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you want to get off your goddamn chest, then go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And then, you know what I'm saying? If you want to change the name of who is in the video or who we talking about, go ahead and do that. And yeah, let's get into this. Huh? 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 <laughs> What? Damn. All right, you guys. Hey, Miss Muffin. Thank you for taking the time to read what I'm going through. You can call me Tara. Well, I met this older man named David. Name changed through his mother I used to work for. At that time, I was in a... I was in a live-in unhappy relationship with a guy who I met in the seventh grade, who you can call James. I was unhappy due to him not being able to keep a job, never cleaned the house while I was working, expecting me to give it up at a drop of a dime, and if I didn't, it was a big problem. Also, it got to the point where when we would fight, he would hit me. Anyway, David came into my life, and I met him now, and I let him know my situation, minus the hitting, and he was cool with it. To try to make a long story short, I would text David every day at work, and when I would get off, I would call him, and we would talk for hours before I would walk home to my apartment. I started catching feelings for him quickly, and I could tell that he really liked me too. He was everything that I wanted in a man, everything I asked God for. One day, James goes through my phone, 
because instead of sleeping in the room with him, I slept in the living room because I was texting David. We would get into huge fights. He manhandles me and I ended up walking to my job and talking to my manager, who is David's mother. She basically moved me in with her. So now me and David start talking really heavy to the point where I'm coming to his house and meeting his kids, a 14 and a 16 year old boy, both boys. So we finally get jiggy with it, which was really turning the point of our relationship. He moves me in instantly. Now, mind you, while all of this is going on, I still have feelings for my ex, James. So I'm in emotional turmoil this whole time. David proposes to me a couple of months after me moving in. And honestly, I do feel his mother may have pressured him into doing it because she does have a lot of say so in his life. We were supposed to get married on the 20th of March this year, but a month before the wedding, I tried talking to him about pushing the wedding back when I'm um, pushing the wedding, pushing the wedding back one, because his mother was planning the whole thing and I barely had say so. And two, because I honestly needed some time to emotionally get over my ex-boyfriend, James, who I still, um, time to time would be seeing. Yeah, I know that was stupid to me. Plus, don't judge. I didn't tell him about getting over my ex because honestly, he's the type of man that didn't want to hear that. Talking about David, the older man. He told me that basically we were still getting married on the 20th. He didn't want to have to tell his mom. Yes, he's a mama's boy. So a month before the wedding, I told him I was leaving, going back to my father's house. And that's when our relationship went downhill because he couldn't understand what I was going through emotionally. Everything happened so fast. I had only been dating him two months, also living with him too, before he proposed. And four months later, we were supposed to be getting married. Fasting forward, fast forward to now, since I have been back at my dad's house, I have completely lost the feelings I have for my ex, meaning um, James. I think that was his name, right? Yeah. So, um... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I have completely lost feelings for my ex and I see David every weekend. I spend the whole weekend there with him at his house and with his kids. As every day goes by, I fall deeper and deeper in love with David. I think of him when I wake up while I'm at work and before I go to sleep. I truly honestly love this man. But now since I have moved out of his house, he goes back and forth with me about his feelings for me. One moment he loves me, I'm his baby girl. Next more, The next minute he doesn't know how he feels about me. But of course he wants to stay being um, physical you know, physical and sexual. When we were around each other, it's like I never left. I make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for him, make sure the house is clean, and I tend to his needs. He knows I'm in love with him. I tell him all the time, and he tells me he loves me. He also told me that he doesn't want to hurt me or string me along in his indecisiveness, but still calls me every day. He's still in the position of my engagement ring. He hasn't sold it, and it doesn't. Um, and this doesn't mean that he still wants me to be his wife. Wait, what? But still calls me every day. He's still in possession of my engagement ring. He hasn't sold it. Does this mean that he still wants me to be his wife one day? Should I just leave him alone altogether or should I keep trying? I know me leaving, um, I know me leaving, put it, put a dent in our relationship. Um, meaning I know that being that I moved out of David's house, put a dent in our relationship. But sometimes he makes me feel like there's no return from, from that. And when I asked him what we are going on, what we're doing, he tells me that we're trying to figure out if we can work this out. I can't understand that. I love this man. He teaches me so much. Our age difference doesn't mean a thing to me. And he makes me feel like the woman I've always wanted to feel. But I'm so confused. Also, my ex tells me that he wants me back. He wants to work things out. He wants to marry me. He wants to cater to me. He wants to do all the right things he's done wrong. But my feelings aren't there anymore. And David, he's breaking my heart. And with all these mixed signals, I feel his mom plays a big part in it. Because she now hates me. Please give me your best advice. Damn, girl. Well. She did send me some pictures of her. She's so cute. And David. Um, now David has this older man look like, you know, he has an OG look. He's 38 years old. So he, he looks like an OG. You know how you could look at a person that is like an OG and how they take a picture or like a selfie. It's like, okay, dude, you're not putting no effort into it, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? She like what she like. 
everybody like what they like. So basically, um, Tara is kind of like caught in between. So she was living with her boyfriend since the seventh grade. Well, they weren't living together since the seventh grade, but they've been boyfriend and girlfriend since the seventh grade, Tara and James, and they've been living together. She ain't got no kids, but, you know, I guess James, who has been her boyfriend all these years, he just ain't the man that she want him to be. Basically, they argue. He likes to put his hands on her. He don't like to do shit. He don't like to keep no job. He don't like to clean the house. Let me tell you something. A bitch should get real tired of that real quick. And I'm sorry, but if you about to think you about to not have a job and you don't clean and you about to put your hands on me, nigga, you best hope you ain't under the motherfucking house or the apartment or wherever the fuck we live at nigga listen you're not about to put your hands on me and two you're not about to sit around here like you king king tut or you king of the motherfucking house and you ain't doing shit i'm sorry sweetheart but he you should have been left him a long time ago shouldn't have took you no other man to leave that fucking loser alone but okay so what tara did was she went to work and complained to her manager about how her boyfriend james her boyfriend since seventh grade had been treating her mistreating her not doing what he was supposed to be doing not being a man and what did tara's manager do she hooked her up with her son. Now, first of all, she moved Tara into her own apartment, house, whatever, because she probably felt bad for Tara. Who would feel? I would feel bad for you, too, if you were living in a situation where you was getting beat up, your boyfriend wasn't doing shit for you. However, I'm not going to feel too motherfucking bad for you because it takes two. Sweetheart, you either going to have to learn to get on your own two feet and leave that motherfucker alone, or you're going to just sit there. But I'm not going to feel bad for you. You know what I'm saying? You got to help those who want to help themselves. And if you ain't trying to help your motherfucking self, then there's not much that I can fucking do for you. But it was real sweet of Tara's boss and manager to take her in and move her into her own house. However, she was looking for somebody for her son, okay? Point blank, period. She was looking for somebody... For her son and that's sad when you got a son who's a mama's boy and you got to hook him up with a motherfucking girl when your friend can hook you up with a son that means that they are in control of the relationship from the jump okay so she done hook tara up with her son who's 38 years old and tara's 22 now there's this age ain't got nothing to do with love age and love ain't got nothing to do with age love there's no age limit or whatever i mean there might be a limit to some people but me personally um i'm sorry i'm 43 years old i'm not really trying to date no old ass motherfucking man unless he about to die okay no i'm just fucking with y'all I, I really ain't into old old motherfucking men but you know what i'm saying love don't have no age on and it is who you fall in love with but me personally my preferences i don't really want an old ass motherfucking man so if it was me at 22 years old i don't really think that i would fall for somebody who was 38 years old i'm that's just my preference but to each is old but anyway so you know what i'm saying so tara your manager she done hooked you up with her son who's 38 years old that's kind of like a big age difference but it is what it is now she was looking for somebody for her son now he's 38 years old he had two kids a 14 and a 16 year old why he can't find no girlfriend on his own why his mama got to hook him up with somebody? And then on top of that, sweetheart, you jumped from one flame to the fire. So you left your boyfriend of the seventh grade and moved in with the next nigga. Like, you guys weren't even together long enough. You lived with his mother, then you moved in with him, okay? That really right there, first of all, that was where you went wrong. Let me tell you something. If you've been in a relationship, a bad relationship, or any type of relationship with somebody, and you get out of the relationship, you don't move out to move in with the next person. Bitch, you move the fuck out to move out onto your own. That's the problem with you young people or just people or women in general. When you leave a relationship, bitch, leave that motherfucking relationship and go find time for yourself. Learn to love your motherfucking self. Because if you leave one relationship and get into the next one, you ain't even found time to love yourself or what type of man you really looking for. Then that's when you come along with the mama's boys, the trash, the gutter trash, the fucking swamp creatures or whatever the fuck you can find, okay? This nigga, might, he might be 38 years old, but why is he in such a rush to get married? I'm saying no. Let me tell you something. I don't give a fuck how good the dick is, okay? At 38 years old, nigga, you should be able to put down the work. However, you're OG, and I'm just saying, why the fuck is he trying to get married? Y'all been together four motherfucking months, and then y'all want to get married all together? Sweetheart, listen, you 22 years old, sweetie. You need to find yourself. Stop jumping from one nigga to the next, okay? And find yourself. If that bitch, his mother hates you, oh, well, so what? Life goes on. Move the fuck on and worry about yourself. Now you done moved out of your boyfriend of seventh grade to your boss's house to end with her boy, with, in, with her son. Now you at your father's house. Listen, let me tell you something. I hate my 
motherfucking moving just as much as I hate going grocery shopping because it's kind of like the same thing. You bring the groceries in and you got to put them the fuck away. That's just doing the most. I don't like doing none of it. Okay. I'm damn sure not going to be moving from one place to the next place to the next place. Now, now you house hopping and you worried about if this nigga love you or in this nigga. Let me tell you something, Tara. Love your motherfucking self. You cute and everything. And I mean, that's your type. That, that OG... I'm saying that's your motherfucking type, but you house hopping now and then you dick hopping too because you moving from one to the other. You now you worried about your ex. He telling you one thing and another. Let me tell you this much. I don't think you need near one of them motherfuckers. This OG ass, he's setting his way. When people are a certain age stature, which he is, he's setting his ways. That's why he told you y'all was getting the fuck married and there ain't no turning back now that y'all gonna go through with the wedding. I wish a motherfucker would tell me, listen, I'm not trying to tell my mama that we not getting married so we gonna get married nigga you better get some you better grow some motherfucking balls okay i'm not marrying you because your mama told me to marry you or your mama told you to marry me and if you are so indecisive about if you love me or not then nigga bye now you wondering do he love you one minute and do he love you the next because one minute he's confused about his feelings maybe he need to ask his mother how he feel about you let me tell you something just because he still got your motherfucking engagement ring don't mean he still want to fucking marry you maybe he haven't found a time to hawk that shit and get the money's worth for it. or maybe he waiting for his mama to give him the answer of what the fuck to do with with the goddamn wedding ring or the engagement ring. Best believe, bitch, that I wouldn't be worried about James or David ass or David's fucking mother or his two motherfucking kids. What I would be worried about is Tara's ass and where you fucking gonna live at next because I'm pretty sure you don't want to live with your father for too long. But here's the one thing. Stop going over to David's house and getting mixed signals because if that motherfucker cannot tell you whether he really care about you one minute and don't the next, then maybe he's not what you need. Maybe what you do need is some solid advice, which I'm about to give you right now. Sweetheart, get it the fuck together and stop worrying about every time Dick and Harry and what the fuck they got to offer you and how much they love you and worry about you because if you loved yourself the fuck enough, you wouldn't be caught up in the situation in the first goddamn place now have a motherfucker put their hands on me nigga you better hope that you can write a motherfucking apology letter after you finish putting your hands on me meaning okay if i don't break your motherfucking fingers or your hand off best believe i'm gonna have the next dude meaning my brother my uncle or whoever around the motherfucking corner to come catch your ass and make sure you know damn well you don't never put your hands on a lady but i'm not about to leave one relationship to the next one so meanwhile you are still living with this nigga jay James while you was texting the nigga David and you didn't want to sleep with the nigga James. That's why your ass is caught the fuck up in the middle right now because you didn't know what the fuck to do. Okay. You were so worried about, Oh, I need somebody to love me when the real person that needed to love you was yourself. Okay. When you learn to love your motherfucking self, you won't be in the cost or the midst of all this drama and bullshit. It's nice to be in a relationship and find someone to love you. Trust and believe. I believe there is love for every motherfucking body, but sometimes you got to find love yourself within yourself okay because if you don't you gonna still keep picking gutter trash gutter swamp jail bait or whatever the fuck else you want to motherfucking call it and niggas who don't amount to nothing non-purpose men okay like i told y'all bitches before they are called non-purpose men or non-purpose women women okay because i'm not gonna throw all the shade on men but women too, y'all be non-purpose motherfuckers too in a relationship where the man gotta do everything and y'all bitches don't wanna do shit, okay? So I'm not gonna downplay men and I'm not gonna downplay women. It's the both breeds, okay? It's both men and women, okay? However, when you find within yourself that you can love yourself and you set goals for yourself, meaning like me. I done put that motherfucker out and put him out of the state. And now my goals was to make more money and better myself and do things for myself more. And that is what I have done. And then that allows me to see that it puts my radar on are these niggas that ain't worth shit or these men, not even niggas, these men. When I say niggas, I don't mean black men. I mean men. Okay. It don't matter what color you are. That's just ten terminology slang. But it puts my radar on and my red flags go up for these non-purpose men in general. You could be black, white, Chinese, Hispanic. It doesn't matter. Just like that white guy that I was dating named Dan. He was really cute. He had a good job. But 
red flag, red flag, when you started talking about your baby mama and you was talking negative and downgrading her and downplaying her to me. I never even met this bitch and you just met me. So red flag, red flag. And then when you talk about people's cars that you can tell if a person is dirty by the way that they keep their car inside and your microwave looked like it was the Roach Motel, red flag, red flag right there. That let me know, you know what? Mm, not what I was looking for, okay, white boy. Not what I was looking for, okay? So, Tara, stop worrying about David. Stop worrying about if David wants you, okay? That's his mama, all right? What he want is whatever his mama fucking want. And as much as I love my sons, I don't want them to be no mama's boy. And I damn sure ain't about to find them no motherfucking relationship. Because trust and believe, if it was up to me, the motherfuckers would be... Um, in the armed forces or the air forces or whatever, staying far the fuck away from women in general, okay? Until they were settled down and the right one came across, okay? If I had to handpick the women for my sons, you best believe these bitches or these women would be of that stature. And my sons wouldn't have no fucking relationships or marriage until they was well established in life. And that's just how it would fucking be. But being that my sons ain't no motherfucking mama's boy, okay, to a certain extent, meaning they ain't about to let nothing happen to their mama because they go all out. But they don't need me to approve their relationship. Fuck with whoever you want to fuck with and be with whoever the fuck you want to be with because I'm not trying to be caught in the middle of it. But sweetheart, you cannot go from one house to the another to the another, okay, and then to the another. Listen, stay where the fuck you at and stop worrying about him wanting to marry you, okay? And worry about what the fuck you about to do. Because, listen, you need to get your shit together so you can have your own shit. Point blank, period, bottom line, okay? So let's move on to the next. All right, let's get into this one. Hey, April, I love your videos. I've been a subscriber since Mumsy was in your lap back in New York. I'm finally writing you because I am broken. I'm going to change my name to Sandy, and my mother's name will be June. June and I have never had a good relationship. She's a hardworking woman and took good care of me as a child, but was always so damn cold. We never had that mother-daughter loving relationship like I see so many people have, such as you and Mumsy. She has zero communication skills, but I somehow felt the need to stay attached to her because I have no other family. We are immigrants and always been just the two of us. Now, at almost 30 years old, I believe our relationship needs to end. June works at a home care nurse as a home care nurse, and I'm currently working part time while in school to change my career. With this change, I feel as though June has taken the opportunity to become emotionally and verbally abusive to me. I finally have had enough one day and became vocal and lashed out after one of her many shit talking sessions june told me she will never have to speak to me in her life and it wouldn't phase her normally it would be a few days but it's been weeks since she said anything to me not even hello or goodbye when i say it back to her i am so uncomfortable and i am really considering moving my belongings into storage and living out of my car to save until i can find a place of my own while on a part-time salary I have plenty of friends who would possibly want to roommate with me, but my relationship with June has made me so afraid to get close to people because I'm afraid there's something wrong with me that my own mother doesn't like me. Please help. Any advice will be greatly appreciated. Damn. So, as you guys can read or have heard, Sandy is 30 years old and she's an immigrant. Her mom's name is June, okay? So it's just been the two of them, okay, because they're immigrants and they've come here from other country. She has just said that her mom is not like the real emotional, loving mom. She's very cold hearted. She could say some pretty cold and crucial things and it'll hurt. That shit'll hurt. Let me tell y'all something. I have five kids, okay? Y'all know that. And sometimes as a parent, we say some mean, hurtful things. And those mean, hurtful things will really scar a motherfucker. Now, trust and believe, I know this for a fact because I have explained to you guys on numerous occasions about me and my mom's relationship. We ain't no immigrants, but my mom has never been like the real emotional, loving person, which is unfortunate. And she has said so many mean and hurtful things to me that you know what? It has kind of like rubbed off on me. And sometimes as a adult, I have learned this, that you do not talk to your kids like that. And so I have learned this over the years. You know, it has rubbed off on me to the point where sometimes I have, might have said that to my own children, but I have learned from my mistakes and have bettered myself as a person and, and as a parent. However, 
When you have a parent that is so cold and mean and they say shit, that shit hurt like a knife. Like that shit feel like a Uzi. Okay. Because for one, that's your mother or your parent. And you feel like they are the ones that have brought you into this world. So they are the ones that's supposed to be, you know, nurturing to you and keep you safe. But it don't always work out like that. Let me tell you, I love my mother to death and she is 63 years old and she has learned because I had to teach her. All right. I have had to tell her, listen, you don't talk to people like that. And you're not about to talk to me like that. Or better yet, I I have had to sit her down and tell her and explain to her the way you have talked to me as a child has really, really affected me and it has hurt me. It might have been 10 years down the line, but when you're telling your 14 year old daughter that, oh, I look better than you, that shit hurts. Like, why the fuck is you even comparing yourself to me in the first goddamn place? And I have told y'all this in a real talk video before about my mom. She has said those things to me as a child, like, you know what I'm saying? At the age of 14, either I was 14 or 15, I'll never forget, my mother came to me and said to me, oh, I look better than you. I'm prettier than you. Like, okay, first of all, I don't even know where that came from. But second of all, why is you even comparing yourself to me, your daughter? And um, third of all, why is you even fucking coming at me like that? I am a child. Why is you comparing yourself to a teenager? You look better than me? Not really, okay? But these are the things she, she would say to me. Or she would say things like, you know, you're a hoe. Cause I had a boyfriend at the age of 15 and when I say she called me a hoe bitches, I mean, she called me a motherfucking hoe, a whore wrote in my diary with red lipstick, her red lipstick, how you are a nasty whore. You will never amount to nothing and cut my motherfucking clothes up. Okay. So trust and believe it wasn't just the words that spewed out of her motherfucking mouth. It was her actions as well. And from shit like that, I stopped fucking generally fucking with her. Like, you know what I'm saying? She called me a hoe at the age of 18. I already had a baby. At that moment, I was like, you know what? Deuces. And I moved out. Like, I literally left that same day and never came back. Never moved back in with my mama since then. So, I have moved out of my mother's house. Excuse me. Was I, I, was, I was about to be 19. I moved out with my first kid and went to live with my friend, okay? In her roach infested apartment because I had nowhere else to go. But I was not about to stay there in your home while you write all kind of things and cut my clothes the fuck up. Bitch, I'm 18 years old. You cutting clothes up, calling your kind of names and shit. Like, where do we do this the fuck at? It's, I'm grown i got a kid don't fucking call me names like ho and whore like i mean really let's not get technical pamela because i could really spew some shit out from hearing your ass as a kid what was going on in your room but we're not even gonna go there okay however i understand where she's coming from because let me tell you something the shit that you say to your kids will be an everlasting effect okay I have gotten into it many a times with my daughter, Tati. I have gotten into it many a times with all my kids, except for Mumsy and my 15-year-old, because they still young, and they haven't gone through the shit, but they a different type of child. You know, each child, like I say, is different. They all got different personalities, and you got to deal with each one of them accordingly, okay? But, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I, let's take, for a bit, uh, example, my 19-year-old son. He's going through his own thing. He likes to smoke weed all the time and I had to put my foot down about that shit like you're not about to come up in here hot or I had caught him drunk like listen you're not you're not old enough and we have gotten into it like he, we we haven't gotten into it but I have gotten into it with him because I'm grown you're not about to come up in my motherfucking house doing no fucking dumb fuck shit okay you don't even clean up after yourself around here you leave a mess and I'm not dealing with it so you know it is what it is with him, but um, we have had our moments, and I have said lots of things to him, and there's the way that you say him, because I've noticed with certain kids, like I say, they all have their own personality, and some of them you could come out and lash and yell at, but still you cannot say just any old thing, and with him, I have to sit there and have a talk with him, but it seems like regardless of what he's going to do with the fuck he want to do, so now he's, he's shipped out, you know what I'm saying, he'll be leaving the beginning of September, goodbye, get your life together. Now he shipped out. However, I can totally relate to what she's talking about when she said her mom. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. You 30 years old. You got friends that want to roommate with you. Don't feel like, you know what I'm saying, your friends are not going to be the type of person that you want to live with because of the bullshit that your mother has put you through. And don't feel like it's you. Sometimes it's hard being a parent and they don't. there's no book about how to be a parent. However, words cut like a knife. And the, the one thing that you can do, if she tells you she ain't going to speak to you no more and she's fine with that, then you know what? That's just the meanness in her. 
Because I'm pretty sure that she ain't fine with it. If there was something that happened to you while you were still living with her and you ended up in the hospital, I bet you, I bet you that your mama would be worry sick about you, okay? And she would be right there by your side. So that is just the meanness in the, 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 the just the meanness in her, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes older people are just so stubborn that they just can't help themselves, okay? And they feel like regardless of what they write, Okay, they right because they are parent. They feel like they right, but as a parent, you ain't always right. It's not nice to say mean things to anybody. Okay, especially not to your kids. However, I'm not about to live in some home with somebody else who is making me feel uncomfortable. Okay, if she feel like she don't want to speak to you no more, sometimes it's best to move out. Sometimes it's best to move along because then your relationship will grow and it'll become a better relationship. Me and my mom, it took some time, but you know what I'm saying? I got older, she got older, and it took a lot of time. Just even with my eldest son, who's 25, it took a lot for me and him to really get along. And now he is doing better and he has matured, so it took some time. Would I want to live with? Would I ever want to live with him again? Nah, I really wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Do I want to? live with any of my kids the only kids that I really would want to live with right now is my 10 year old and my 15 year old because the other three are grown and like I don't really feel like y'all need to be around me and y'all are setting your ways and an old bitch like me is setting her motherfucking ways and there's a lot of shit that I'm just not about to motherfucking tolerate so sometimes it's best for y'all bitches to get the fuck away from me and out of my motherfucking face however I think like for you it's really best for you to move the fuck out, okay? I don't. I would not say stay in your car because that's not a really healthy environment and that's not really a comfortable environment, you know what I'm saying? But what I would do is I would definitely look into maybe if you can't get an apartment, maybe you can find a room for rent. Not with a roommate. Not, when I say a room, not with a roommate, meaning don't go looking up some strange motherfucker like on Craigslist or offer up where you can have a roommate like that single white female crazy shit maybe rent a room just for you okay a room something that you can afford but don't definitely not want to live in your in your in your car don't let this lady push you out into the streets of living into your car because honey that's dangerous that's really really not safe and you leaving one thing to something worse so i definitely wouldn't do that however like you said you have friends that you know that would like to roommate with you if you know this then sweetheart try it out don't feel like your mom don't like you and that other people will feel the same way because your mom is her own individual she is her own entity she is the way she is because she is the person that she is so don't feel like you don't want to live with anyone else because of the way your mom goes about it let me tell you something sometimes we need people sometimes we need other people and our mothers or our parents that's great I, I i like hanging out with my daughters okay don't get me wrong but sometimes they get on my fucking nerves too and i just need to vamp and i need an older person i need someone that's more my age you know what i'm saying because we can do more things together i could talk about men i could talk about dick or whatever i can't talk about this shit with my daughter who's 21 she's 21 but i don't I really don't want to sit there with her and talk about that shit, but you know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? So we need people that is more in our age bracket that we can relate to. And maybe being that you could be able to move in with one of your friends and y'all can roommate together, that'll be able to open you up and give you the self-confidence that you need. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes friendships are even better than family ships, meaning relatives and family members. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes family be the ones that drag you down and then you have friends that can drag you down too and then you have friends that can build you up and uplift you and are more of a family member than your own blood relatives. So I wouldn't necessarily give up on moving in with a roommate and moving in with a friend. I would look into that because those type of relationships are bonding relationships and you can find so much in common with your friend. You know what I'm saying? With your friend living with you and you are living with your friend and sharing things and, and, and just doing young women things because you're a young woman, you're 30 years old and your mother, she older, she's set in her ways and some of her ways may be back from her old country and some of her ways are just from being old in general. And yeah, true indeed, she cold hearted. You know, not everybody is a loving person, but you know what? You can't take that into, con you, you can't take that as so personal sometimes. She is who she is and you are who you are, but don't let it drag you the fuck down. So one, definitely don't move into your car two if that's what she don't want to speak to you no more for the rest of your life and you have said hello goodbye how are you to her and she's still being the way she is then you know what you got cut ties because as long as you live up in that motherfucking house with her bitch you're about to be miserable as fuck and i'm sorry but i ain't about to be living with nobody being motherfucking miserable i'm sorry i like i said to y'all last week 
with that that last real talk when the girl was like should i just stay with him until i could save up my money and and because he cheated on me bitch no girl bye fuck that i ain't about to live with no motherfucking body and be miserable and be downgraded and be disrespected you motherfucking crazy a bitch will go live in the car then or in the shelter i am not about to fucking live with nobody while they fucking play on my motherfucking intelligence and heart mother father brother boyfriend husband i don't give a fuck who it is for real let me tell y'all, this slushy that my daughter Tati made for me is real motherfucking good. She used blue raspberry vodka, but this cup that my best friend Shay sent me, the slushy is still slushy, and this is hours later. Like, God damn, am I ever, I'm gonna have to pour this in a regular cup to be able to drink the shit, okay? Because it's still hard. Like, seriously, these cups that you get, she got this cup from Walmart, and it's like 10 bucks. Oh my God, your ice will stay cold for like three days. I'm exaggerating, like 24 hours. Your ice will be ice still, like for real. Oh my God. This is like the best cup I've ever had. Like seriously, she has my name put on it and my sign, which is Gemini. And why did I see somebody else drinking out of my cup in my house? Like, I don't... Um, there's only one other Gemini in here, which is my son, Wuzzle, but I know his name is not motherfucking April, so I hate when my kids use my shit. Like, it has my name on it. Why are you using this? Like, cut it out. Seriously. But yes, sweetheart, don't, don't be around bad company. Bad company is the worst company. You know what I'm saying? Misery, love, fucking company. That's what the name of this fucking video should be. Misery, love, fucking company. Okay? Y'all bitches know what the fuck I'm talking about. Whew, for real. All right, you guys. So this is going to be a long one and the last fucking one. Okay. So, hey, April, you can call me Veronica. I have a little bit of a dilemma regarding my fiance. Let's call him Jonathan. That's my brother's name. The, you know, guys, my brother, the one that's gay, he's possessed, and he's a, um, what do you call it, clairvoyant or whatever. You know, he reads people's minds, some shit like that. Anyway, I am 22 years old and he is 26. We have been together for four years and things have been amazing. He is truly my best friend and we have great times together, but there has been one thing that has been a little bit rocky in our relationship. I believe that we are not sexually compatible. There are times when he will listen to what I ask for during sex and it will be nice, but for the most part, he's not much of a freak while well, I am. He's more on the boring side. For example, he doesn't like to do oral at all. He doesn't want it done to himself, and he doesn't want to do it to me. He always likes to do the same two positions unless I make him do something more interesting. The other thing is he is Mexican, and I am black. I don't have a problem dating outside my race at all, but I am the first non-Mexican person he has ever dated. So my whole point is any other girl he finds attractive is never black. When I see what kind of porn pictures he has on his phone, I notice that they are all Hispanic or white looking females. I know I am the first black girl he's been with, but it's kind of a self-esteem killer when the sex is less than the best and then he doesn't seem to find any other black girl attractive but me. Mm. Not to mention we both live in a town where there's not many black people at all. We both moved here for school, so I don't really get any guys hitting on me. Not that non-black guys don't hit on other races, but it doesn't seem to happen where I'm at. So I did something crazy. I am just feeling sexually frustrated and not feeling very attractive lately. So I made an account on a dating app pretending I was from another state. I had no intentions of really using it. I just wanted to see how many compliments I could get. I didn't message anyone. I started to see that I was getting hundreds of messages even without talking. I have four pictures up and no description in my bio. Yet I still managed to pull over 200 messages in one day. It boosted my confidence so much. I left it alone for about two months two months then this happens i got in a fight with jonathan then i got on the app because honestly i forgot all about deleting it and it was on my phone so then i got on the app because um i started deleting stuff from my phone that night i opened my messages reading the compliments i was getting and i was feeling a little better but then this guy messaged me he was super funny and extremely cute. Let's call him Kevin. I messaged him back and we were just talking regular just because I was mad at Jonathan. I noticed that Kevin started flirting with me, um, with me real, real crazy. I was like, wow. But I started to feel like I was cheating on Jonathan because I was feeling very attracted to Kevin. 
because he was so funny. So I stopped replying to Kevin's messages through the app. But that only lasted so long because I hate to admit this, but we started sexting, you know, text, sex texting. And I realized something. Everything he was saying was right up my alley. The, com the complete opposite of what Jonathan does. I have not spoken to Kevin since, even Kevin since, even though he keeps messaging me that he misses me. I feel too guilty like I cheated. I probably did cheat. Right now, I am just struggling with my thoughts. I feel like I really crave the type of sex Kevin is into, but it seems like it's something that will only happen in my dreams at this point because no matter how many times I've talked to Jonathan about it, it just turns into an argument or we will try, but it's not what I really picture in my head, so it's a huge turn off. I don't know what to do. I don't want to cheat on Jonathan. He is the love of my life and my best friend. I just don't feel as attracted to him as other guys find me, and the sex life is so boring i look forward to your advice i'm sorry it was all over the place i should probably also mention that jonathan and i live together well damn you're really not all over the place girl veronica okay so veronica and jonathan have been together for four years she's 22 he's 26 she's black he's mexican and first of all the sex is boring Okay, so listen, let me tell you something about sex. I have been there plenty of times. You guys know I have five children. Okay, but let me tell y'all this. When you have a relationship with somebody, um, some people think that sex is not the key to the relationship. It plays a, a huge part in the motherfucking relationship. Let me tell y'all. I'm going to just use my own shit as a... I was married and I had been with that man for like 17 years of my life. Now we have been up and down in our relationship, in our marriage. Okay. And like I told y'all, he was, he drank a lot and we got into a lot of arguments. But the one thing that kept a bitch there was the dick. Okay. That nigga sex game was off the chain. The best sex game that I have ever had. Okay. And like, you'd be like, I'm never going to find that shit nowhere else. Okay. Trust and believe that might be true, and then it might not be true, okay? Then I got with that asshole who I got rid of, okay? Now, first of all, mind you, I was fucking with this other dude out here in Chandler that I had told y'all about. He was fine. He had he was built and everything, but he was kind of stuck on himself, you know what I'm saying? And though he would always be like, oh, I'm going to spoil you, I didn't really want to be with you like that, dude, because I already knew what type of nigga you was. You, you probably thought it was all about you, which it might have been, but let me tell y'all something. His sex game was just right there, like, with my ex-husband. Like, they was, like, at neck and neck, meaning the dick size, the tongue game, everything. When I say everything, meaning they was, like, exactly the same, okay? I thought that I had went to heaven with his ass. Now, mind you, like I said, I didn't want to have a relationship with him, but his 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 dick game was so on point, y'all. Like, it was just like, oh, okay. Then I got with... The one that I got rid of, Jamel, with his whack ass, okay? Now, remember, me and Jamel, we had a kid together a long time ago, all right? A long time ago. My son is almost 20 years old. We was only together for, like, a year, like, till my son was not. No, Wuzzle was, like, um, I left Jamel when Wuzzle was, like, seven months. So we weren't even together that long, okay? And I, and I got with my husband. Now, mind you. The sex that I had with Jamel was so whack, it was horrible. Like, I would have to constantly keep uh, visualizing my ex-husband and hope that I would get off. You know what I'm saying? Like, meaning I would come, I would have an orgasm. That shit didn't work. I did not have not one motherfucking orgasm the whole... How many months did he live with me? October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. He lived with me like seven and a half months. I did not have not one orgasm living with that nigga the whole time we would have sex. And, like, your dick is, like, this little, okay? And on top of that, you it doesn't last long. And you don't even know how to fuck, okay? I'm sorry, but I, I he wasn't freaky. Like, the same two fucking positions he would want to do, too. Hit it from the back and hit it from the front. Like, nigga, are you gay or some shit like that? Like, I would start thinking that, like, or he would say things like, I'm too aggressive, um, and that's a turn off. No, nigga, I think you gay. That's what the fuck I think it is. I think your ass is gay. Not saying that Jonathan, um, your boyfriend is gay, but I'm just saying, like, that shit is a turn off. And when you are into one thing and then the other person that you're with is not into that shit, it's really hard to adjust to that shit. So it would be to the point where I didn't even want to bother having sex with him. Like, seriously, like I would talk to him about it and I would try to tell him, like, listen, you know, could we do this? Could we do that? Never would get into it. You know what I'm saying? Or he would ask me dumb motherfucking questions like the shit like, 
he asked me one time whose dick was bigger and i was like listen i don't really want to talk about that why are you asking me about my ex-husband's dick okay he kept on he kept on asking me until i had to tell him my ex-husband okay his dick is bigger and he know how to fuck all right this is the shit that i would have to go through and i found myself started making up excuses of why i didn't want to have sex with him like oh i got my period like damn your period is a month long oh i don't feel good like right around a certain time of the night i would start feeling sick though i wasn't sick but sick but it was like you know what i'm not even about to bother and put myself through this shit i'm tired of having dry mouth meaning when you fake an orgasm, your mouth get dry, you get cotton mouth, okay? So I would get tired of doing that. I would get tired of faking it. I would get tired of trying to be high to get off on, you know what I'm saying? And on top of that, dude, you 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 don't even know how to eat pussy, okay? You making my shit numb because you, you're not even eating it right. Or you don't even know how to finger either. Like, the whole shit was this. He was the worst in bed, and he was so fucking boring. It was, like, the worst. Like, I couldn't even deal with it. And I was so glad that he finally left. Like, there have been numerous times when I had talked to him about it. Numerous times when I told him that he was whack and to the point where it got to be like, you know what? This is not even working out. And it just made my whole relationship with him even worse. Not to mention that he just was fucking annoying anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Okay, so you guys seen who just popped in, which is my grandson. He wanted to show me his boo-boo, so I definitely had to stop the video. But, yeah, so like... When you are in a relationship with somebody, um, uh, some things are are not guaranteed, unfortunately, but some things are. Okay, as I was saying before, my memory card got full. Now my whole freaking thing is totally different. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. But like I was saying, some things in your relationships are not guaranteed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the sex. Like, some people may not agree with me, but that plays like a huge major role in that shit. Like, look, I mean, you know what? <laughs> It plays like a major role, okay, in anybody's relationship. And I'm sorry, but some people are just not sexually compatible. And so to me, it feels like if you're putting yourself through misery because of some relationship and you have had these conversations with him about it on endless accounts and he's not complimenting you and you're the only black girl he finds attractive then to me i feel like huh what's the what's up with that you know what i'm saying that would make me feel some type of way and it's hard being a woman and some people may not may not think it is but it's very hard being a woman because we go through a lot and when we are in a relationship and we feel like our mate, our spouse does not find us attractive. It plays a huge major damper on us as women in general. And like, I know with myself that, you know what I'm saying? Like I would just always kind of like spruce myself up and just always try to be pretty for my ex-husband. But then when it came to this asshole, like I really didn't even care because he was just like, to me, unattractive. I didn't like his attitude. I didn't like his sex game. I didn't like really anything about him much at all anymore. You know what I'm saying? I think the whole reason why I was with him was because I was lonely and I was yearning for something that I was hoping for that was the same, like, with my ex, but it wasn't. Um, so, with me, like, I'm sorry, like, I know a lot of people might be like, oh, well, sex is not everything. Sex is not everything. You know what I'm saying? It really, really isn't. But you share that one thing with a person and you have to find that bond with, with the person. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to be totally compatible in that shit. Like, so, and if you're not, then the other person is going to go seeking it elsewhere. Just like what you're doing. You're seeking it elsewhere. And some people might find like, oh, that's not right to do that to old dude, but it's not right for him to be playing with these mind games and he's only doing what he wants to do. He's only pleasing himself. He's not even pleasing you. If you haven't had a conversation with him about it, which you have said you did, then I don't really know what else to tell you. You know what I'm saying? If you have constantly talked to this dude about, hey, listen, you ain't fulfilling me or maybe that's what you need to stay because sometimes you can say stuff to them like, look, can we try it this way? Can we try it that way? And they might try it, but they're not understanding. They might feel like, oh, you're just trying to get off and you want to experiment. Sometimes you got to be real honest and be like, listen, dude, like I had to tell a nigga, but that shit still didn't work because his dick ain't, his just, he couldn't fuck. But you know what I'm saying? I had to tell, you have to tell him like, listen, you're not pleasing me. I'm not feeling it and it's boring. You have to say that. You might not have to say it mean, like harsh, make sure your tone is okay. 
But sometimes we have to be abrupt like that. Sometimes we have to have no filter to get our point across. And maybe he will change things up. But if the dude don't change things up, then you know what? Sometimes you got to end shit. Four years is not a long time and you still young. You know what I'm saying? He might be your best friend. He might be your best friend now because look where you live at. You live in a town where ain't nobody there. So basically, you ain't got nobody but yourselves. Sometimes you got to open up. You got to venture out. You young still. You know what I'm saying? So you've been with him since you was for four years. You 22. You, you've you been with him for a while. You know what I'm saying? A while, while. And I don't know what type of Mexican he is or whatever. I mean, maybe he's not one of those vatos. I don't know how they get down. You know what I'm saying? I've never dated a Mexican. But I will tell you this. Sometimes you got to find the right person. And sometimes, with that being said, we go through shit and trials and tribulations where it's like, okay, he my best friend. He's the love of my life. But that's what you feel for the moment because that's who you with. You know what I'm saying? But he's guaranteed not going to be there for the rest of your life. He's what you with now. Okay? Not saying that he won't be. But if you are not happy with one thing you have constantly talked to him about it sweetheart listen sometimes we got to move on as bad as we don't want to some people be like oh that's selfish but listen if you're not happy and you really really not happy what the fuck you gonna stay with him for then because you miserable let me tell y'all something just like she said she a freak okay and same goes here okay so that nigga that i had to get rid of he couldn't do nothing to please me all right a bitch is a freak i like freak sex and i'm saying if we gonna do this we about to do this okay that's just what it is and if you got some boring lame ass dude that want to do it two ways then nigga you is not for me and i'm just saying point blank period i'm not saying dudes hit me up in my dm because please we not even about to do that there's one freak that i'll be freaking with and that's it okay and that's the only person that I would feel comfortable with. But, you know what I'm saying? Listen, if you bored with the dick, honey, then you bored with the motherfucking dick. And you won't either have to tell him, like, listen, you boring me, boo. I love you to death. You're my best friend. But there are some things that have to change or else I'm going to have to seek it elsewhere. And that means that we're not going to be together. I'm just saying. Listen, let me tell you something. Boring sex is the worst motherfucking sex there is, okay? Can you imagine somebody being bored with sex for seven months, let alone four years? Listen, let me tell you something, bitches, okay? When that nigga would go to New York, I would be so happy. Or when he would go to sleep, I would be so happy. Because a bitch would pull out her glass motherfucking dildo and these motherfucking hands right here and fucking satisfy myself. If I got a motherfucking nigga laying next to me, but he ain't doing it for me, but this is, bitch, you got to go. For real, I'm just saying yes so on that note sweetheart just have that talk with him and let him know just you don't have to be blunt straight up to the point no chaser get yourself a drink bitch and let that nigga know and if he can't fulfill your needs the sweetheart you got to move on to the next dude okay or not even to the next dude but fulfill your own needs for a minute because sometimes that shit works too trust and believe a bitch is going through a drought right now okay and as much as I would love a companion, I know the one for me is the only one that I have been with forever. And that's the only one that will do it for me. Meaning mentally, physically, sexually, all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? We go through our life changes. And yeah, he might not have been the best person. He might have been back and forth to gym. And he might have been an alcoholic, but he's not that person anymore. So listen, we go through some shit in life. And I'll tell y'all what, that's my nigga to the end. That's my motherfucking nigga. Yep. He definitely is. So, yes, you guys, on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk video. I am so hungry right now, like hangry, literally hangry. And I really wanted to do this um, um, try on haul, but I'm so freaking hungry right now that my head is spinning. You ever be so hungry that you just can't deal? That's how I feel right now. I'm about to ask Nate to make me some oodles and noodles, like seriously. Oodles of fucking noodles because I'm so hungry. And I hope you guys have like a really great day. Um, happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. And yeah, I will see you guys in a soon to come video. Leave your opinions below. And oh yeah, check out my Instagram because I have my question and answer uh, my questions and answer video coming up soon. So I have a post on Instagram that you can ask me questions and I'm going to go off of that and read them. So definitely go ahead and check that out because yes, I'm finally going to get to do a question and answers video. So you guys can ask me whatever you want. And if I feel like you're too intrusive, I won't answer. But yes, definitely check it out. I love you guys. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll speak to y'all in a soon to come video.